Are you ready? Yes, I am. Hey, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Knocked Conscious. It's Mark here, and I am very excited about this episode because I have my madre here, my mother, my biological mother, and she has an amazing story. And I'll share a little background for you, but then we'll hand it off to her to tell us this amazing story. But basically... I don't know if everybody knows this, but I am a first generation American. My parents were both born in Germany, but met here and then had my brother and myself. So the story of how my mom came here is extremely fascinating. The story of how my father came here was also fascinating, but he probably has a harder time to express it than my mom. So mom, welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I'm great. Tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us who you are, where you live, where you're from, a little background, and uh, we'll start with uh, probably right after, and then we'll, we'll go forward from there. Okay. My name's Rita. I was born in 1944 in Germany, came to the U.S. in- Where in Germany? Let's, where let's in go. Germany? In Saxony, which is very close to the Czech border. Erzgeberg is which another it's a smaller subsection of Saxony and which later became after the war was given to the Russians and became East Germany uh, in 1955 well in 53 we escaped East Germany and went to West Germany and in 1955 we immigrated to the US and okay. here I am all right. So this is 53 when you left East Germany, technically escaped. Right. I mean, it, Correct. because you were a citizen and they did not want their citizens to right. leave. Right. The wall went out in 59 mm -hmm. or 60. 60. Okay. So, uh -huh. so it was still many years prior to that Correct. where they basically all erected, erected a, a piece to keep you in or Correct. out. Okay. Correct. There was a, there was a wall, but it wasn't a physical wall. It was a... Minefield. I know there was a minefield right, and some barbed right, wire and right. some other things. So there were open fields that were sectioned Correct. off. So 1953, um, you were born in February. So probably, Correct. you're probably nine years old, right? Because it's later than February in the year. Correct. So tell us a little bit about how you got from just, I mean... What happened? You were young. You were born in 44. The war technically ended 45. Right. So you don't have much memory, I'm sure, no, of that. No, only from hearsay. Right. But I'm curious what your recollections are of you leaving East Germany. Like, what happened to around you in school? What happened, you know, socially with your with your father, with his family, his friends, and how, how he did this? I love to hear this story because, I first of all, I want to document it because it's an amazing story. But secondly, it's just... It's impressive because I'm fortunate and blessed to have an idea of what a first generation American, like the the, ble the blessing of that, of being here and what you saw and what you're seeing now that makes you uneasy from what you came from. So 1953 happens. Okay. So 1953, uh, I was second grade, I guess. Uh, first grade, the in in school they had an organization called the Young Pioneers, and they got to wear uniforms. It was a cute little uniform with white blouse and a blue scarf. And was it more like brownies than Hitler Youth, or was it, it more like? Well, I don't I don't Boy know Scouts, about Hitler brownies? Youth okay. since I wasn't I. I didn't partake in that. I wasn't. Obvious, I wasn't yeah. around. Obviously. But it was what it was a total uh, communistic organization with the benefits of child activities. 
Yeah, so they, they it was in inducting you, inducting you into this through Correct. your activities. You're now being indoctrinated into Correct. this ideology, Correct. right? Correct. Just like anything else, just like right. you would for anything, just like going to church would indoctrinate you to the church, right. Right. whatever the ideology of the time. Right. But this was based around the communistic ideology. Is yep. that correct? Yep. And everyone in my class was a member except for me. My dad wouldn't let me join. He was vehemently against it. Always was a rebel. When the Nazis came around, he was a rebel. When, when communism came around, he was a rebel. So he wouldn't let me join. I had a friend we were like peas in a pod. He was more like a brother to me than he was a friend. And he, he did, uh, he, he did join. And every day after school, my father had a barber shop. He was self-employed. And every day after school, he would come, we would come home and we would beg him, please let me go, please. And one day he came home and he had a bunch of pamphlets, and he handed them to my father, and he said, Uncle Aegon, look at this, look at this, look at this. And my father took one look at it, took it, ripped it up, and threw it in the fireplace, and said, this, S-H-I-T. It's shit, yeah, trust right, me. Correct. We, we've said worse on the show. Yes, I think okay. <laughs> so, uh, But in German, it's scheiße, just so everyone knows. It's da scheiße, <laughs> I think, something like Die that. Die scheiße. Die scheiße, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that too. So we had... So we, we had a very young teacher at the time who was right out of school, also very politically communist And oriented. probably just very active, like young and energetic, right? right, There's, right. That's a good way to get is that through that youth and through right. the education system, right. which we're actually seeing in current times, right. for sure. Correct. So, so he, uh, he went back to school and told the teacher what happened. And the teacher reported my father. And my father got wind of it because we lived in a small town. He was the only barber shop, so everybody in town was his customer. And, and in addition, if I may, I would assume that most of the adult parents at this time who were still alive had fought in the war, had some not, kind of connection to each other just because they were right. they were brothers right. in arms. Right. So that when something happened, they were close enough to be able to share information. Right. So your your father got wind of it through someone close to him, probably someone, you know, a brother but in arms. Also in the way. older people were not buying into this. Oh, for totally. sure not. Well they just came out of something they were told right. out to right. what to do. So my, I don't think my that grandfather was grandfather had a saying between the Nazis and the communists, he used to say, it's the same pile of shit just different flies yeah or different so, smell right right <laughs> different flies yeah. that's what he said so um so they reported he reported him and someone that was in the police force or in that organization that would get wind of this was a customer of my dad's and a friend of his he told him about it and he said you you better watch your back so my dad decided it was time to pack up and leave. Okay, let me ask you, let me stop you there for a second because it's very important. Obviously, we have some family members that came from East Germany as well, but many of our family, our media, or our family is, is still in what was East Germany. Physically. Right. Obviously, the wall's been down since. We're, it's no right. longer that, but they stayed. Everyone. Except, yeah. well, you're... Except later. Right, father but, and brother. But this is the thing, so... Your father decides this. Now, who can he tell? Who can't he tell? I mean, he can't tell anyone, right? Not no. even family. Right, right. So so we concocted a story. They concocted a story. They, My mom and my sister and I left first because you couldn't leave en masse. Because at that time, you couldn't, tr you, you couldn't tr travel to Berlin as a whole family unit because it would arouse suspicion. Right, it would, many it would ring people, alarms, right? It would ring alarms that, oh my gosh, people are leaving as a group. That obviously, you leave together would make sense that you'd want to leave for good. Right. If it's if it's broken up, right. it, it's You're, less suspicious for correct, certain. Correct, correct. And, and just to give a geographical background, Berlin, Which is, important in Berlin this is in the middle of East 
Germany. Right. So there is and a free Berlin part. Berlin is divided into east and west. Yes. So there's a free part of Berlin. The west. Correct. There's the west. a West German portion of Berlin. Mm -hmm. However, the entirety is physically. In inside East. the borders of East Germany, even though it's sovereign within that East Correct. Germany. So even if you got there, leaving outside, leaving by ground transportation of any kind would have to be Let's, going through the country that you're trying to escape. Leap, leap, right. right. So, so that's you had an impossibility. to have a legitimate reason. One of yeah. them was people still did work in West Berlin that lived in East Germany. Uh, another was... At that time, this was before the wall, so there were sports events that people would travel to, but you'd have to have the physical tickets, and and other would be to maybe visit family. So we traveled with a man uh, who happened to be visiting in our town at the time, who was... Uh, so how, how, before that, this is this, you're talking about the story about leaving, correct? Right. Okay, right before that. Your father comes home, or how how do, how does this get it communicated to your mother and you and your daughter and your youngest sister? Who's first of all, you're nine; she's two. She's right. not even going to grasp right. this. So, right. how is okay, that so told? What are you told the night before or the the, the, the night event? before? We were told that we were visiting my grandparents. They couldn't tell me because I probably knew. would have run back and right. Squealed. Well, if you knew. Right. Yeah, I mean, right. you're not exactly going to evade right. a question as I a do. child. I would not right. have wanted to leave, probably, and and they couldn't trust me to understand what, what was going on or what the reasoning was behind it. Uh, but somehow my father convinced my mother to do this uh, for the safety of the whole family because he felt he was going to be locked up. And that probably would have happened eventually. So you felt that, or your father felt, getting you guys out, but he might suffer uh, imprisonment, re, whatever, re-education well, or whatever. That was the first step. Okay, that was the first thought, and though. And the main reason was not to leave in mass, so right. we wouldn't create suspicion. So this teacher that was visiting his son, I mean, this, this man that was visiting his son, who was a teacher, but he was of the old school, yeah. and he... He was a friend of my father's, and he said, your, your wife and the two kids can travel with my dad. He's go he lived in West Berlin, the father. Right, so that's obviously a bonus because right. you have now right. an actual so now physical address. So he played as, our, as though he was our uncle. So, okay, so he didn't have paperwork showing uncle, no, even if the name was different, but you could say, oh, yeah, we're married or we're, whatever. It's my daughter, my sister's child right, or right, whatever. Okay. Right. He's very uncle. interesting. So we we traveled. How often would you say now in hindsight that happened? Uh, I mean, in, was this was this kind of a common way to do it if you were going to do it? Or or well, the main thing was to get into Berlin. Right. Once that you're was, in West Berlin, at least right, that's right. where you need. Or to Or if you had family in the West to visit them and never come back. Right. But we we didn't have that luxury, so because we every every one of an, in our family lived in East Germany, in right, you didn't have that option, right, was right. it? Right. So we, I remember it was March. We left. I remember my You're mom just put nine. on two and three pair of underpants, undershirts on you, on me because. You we couldn't, couldn't take a right. lot of luggage. Yeah, imagine. We couldn't, you know, we're right. going for two days <laughs> to visit my uncle. You know, that's uh, actually he posed as my mom's uncle because he was an older man. So um, so we, we went into Berlin. And in East Berlin, before you get into the West, they, they would block the train by putting... A huge, um, Iron, like a tree I, stump. Right, eye beams or something in front of across, it. Across so the track. That, that yeah. train could not, in case there was some conspiracy yeah. that the whole train was escaping or something right, like, like that. Right, like some kind of checkpoint. And then the Vopos came on board with What's their, a Vopo? It's a... It's, Voluntary police? Is that what Vopo no, is? No, it's a folks police, which okay. means... Folks the police. Pol yeah, So right. the people's police. Police, right. The police. They came on board and they went through everyone asked everyone where they were going and of course i was 
you know, we were told this is our uncle and we're visiting him. And, you know, uh, so. You had the, you, your story was true because you didn't have the truth. You had right, the story. Right, right. And uh, in Germany, if an older person, right. you call them uncle anyway. You don't call them by the first name or you don't call them. You call right. them uncle. Yeah, Everybody's an uncle or family, an aunt. Family, friends, or family. Right, right. In the German culture, for right, sure. Right, correct. So um, we we didn't rouse any suspicion. Other people, I mean, they checked their luggage. They now, checked. you shared a story about someone, a family getting pulled off and not going back that on. Was is that was correct, right? correct. So tell me about there that. There were two that, women. You're nine years old, and you don't know what you're doing. Right. So obviously, but just tell me about that experience. There were two women, and they made the mistake of packing. They had bed sheets. They, had, they took household goods. I mean, not like pots and pans, but... Yeah, like but, heirlooms or but something. But just, yeah, the, mm. you know, the necessary things. And right there, that... That totally aroused suspicion, and I remember them taking them both of them off with their luggage, and we never we didn't see them again when the train left. So, so all right, so we got across. But and, just the image of these Vopos coming on. Yeah, that well, was a little scary. At, they at had nine, these, right? They I had mean, they're these armed. guns drawn. Right, they're, they're yeah, armed, right, 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 and they're imposing figures. Right, they, they're already imposing to adults, and right. you're you're nine years right. old. Oh, you and two I, year old I couldn't sister. imagine my mother must have been sweating. Like right, they, everybody was scared. The whole, the whole, the whole feeling the in the whole country was, was heavy, scared. Right? Yeah, was people people would close their windows when they talked because they were afraid somebody would go by I that hear. would hear something negative that wow. they weren't supposed to be thinking or saying or it was it was just a different of course as children you don't you don't grasp that but no i can't imagine any child grasping the nuance of right. secrecy and right is re, regime change philosophical ideological ideological loss coming out of the war i mean all these emotions at one time are just being flooded. Right. And there's a right. there's a power vacuum. Right. To an extent, right? Which the Soviets were very quick to fill. Right. Happily filled that yep. that void. And and that's what you're stuck in. So these these two women were taken off and never seen again and Well, I, not by us. So the imposing nature though of this trip as a whole must have just been generally scary in a way. But but how how did your younger sister react? She's two years oh, she old. Just, she just she didn't she was, know what was okay. Going she on. she wasn't crying. wasn't like crying no, or anything. No, okay. she didn't know what was okay. going on. So that night we stayed at this man's house, and the next day, so the idea we're still in East Berlin. We're still in East Berlin. Right now, once so this again, whole thing was to get into Berlin. Correct into, into West East, Ber East into, Berlin. Right into East Berlin. But it was to get ultimately into, into West, West Berlin. Into correct. So once again, you're in physical territory of East Germany, the country. Correct. You travel to East Berlin, which is still East Germany. Correct. Then there is a section called West Germany, which is the free Democrat, the right. West German okay. side. Actually, after the war, that you have to get into. Berlin got divided into four sections. Right. The Russian section, which was East Berlin. The French section... The American section and the British section, we which gave were our, West right. Berlin. But we gave our section to Russia, which they took. No. Well, we, we split up after. We did give our section of Germany to Russia to manage, if I'm, if I'm we not gave, mistaken. We gave. Because we back, we, we're in a different right, landmass. Right. I mean, we, we didn't have the logistics to, run, right. to manage but that. But not Berlin. Berlin was. No, Berlin is different. Berlin yeah. was divided into four. But. It was eventually what is West Germany, which which was the British sector, the French, the French and sector, the and the American sector, which was given to the West German government yes. at the end. They, but Russia never did that. Right, but Russia, Russia did not still, give up their, their right, territory right. that they, they, they split up. Right. They still controlled the or whatever. Yes. So okay, so we are in East Berlin, and now we have to go into West. We have to get into West Berlin. And this man advised my parents. I was only told this later. I didn't know this at the time. But they advised to go cross at the French sector. Why, I don't know. But it was the French-controlled sector. So you just had to go to the, to the 
to what was yeah, the gate. like a cross the gate. Over. Yeah, like a gate with and, a whatever, like right. a little And they let horsey. you in. They let... Okay. They, yeah. The, but once you were in West Berlin, you had to report to to a headquarters in in West, West Berlin. Berlin. So like an embassy almost. Correct. Political asylum. Right. Uh, you're seeking right. political asylum. What I'm saying is you're okay, so you after you're there, you still have to now get away. Comes the hard part. Right. Now well, you have to you're actually there. apply. Right. You're, you're, free. you're physically you're, there, yeah, but right. you're not actually a citizen of anything because uh, la- you're right. leaving this thing. Right. Now you need to right. become a citizen of. Or, so you had to okay. get in in line. I mean, there was a line. Now, I understand the line was long. Was it three weeks? Is that correct? It was a week later. We were it was a week. Okay. Still I, in line when my dad came a week later. Oh, okay. So you were still in line. And then how much longer would you say after that? Another week? Or? No. Okay. No, so maybe 10 days? Long. It was pretty, pretty quick after that. Okay. But, but literally standing in line outside for a week. Right. Plus. Right. Right. There were six... <laughs> Just to at be the free. End, at the just, end, there just were to be 6, free, though. <laughs> people a day. A day right. Doing six to 9,000 a day before the wall went up. Six, correct. Six to 9,000 people per day were so leaving. So they almost had, they had to, to put the wall up they, because West Germany could not accommodate all these refugees. East Germany was going to be empty. Right. They couldn't lose them. Right. So something had to be done. Yeah. So I'm curious about that. How much of an agreement there yes, was. Yes. That's, I'm that's, curious. I'm That's not gonna, sort of, I, I hate to sit, to look yeah, behind the veil in right, every right. I always look behind the curtain. I don't know why, but that is my nature. Right. And I am curious the burden that West Germany was feeling from the from the exodus in addition combined with East Germany not right, having anything right. saying they were um, just recovering we'll from, you, right. from the war. Right. This is 53. Right. It was ten less years. than 10 years after yeah. the war. Yeah. They they were still bombed out. And just to be clear, the story from my father's side, this is how crazy it was. If you pull up a map of Germany and you look up a city called Hamburg, it's on the north, northern more north, section. Very north. And they walked, he, two brothers, a sister, and an, a, another brother who died of malnutrition from during the war with the mother and the father. Not no, the father. not the father, just the mother. The mother, my father, his two brothers, and a sister. Mm-hmm. Walked from Hamburg to Berlin, Berlin, hand in hand or whatever, to get away from to the get bombing. away from the bombing this that was happening Second during World the war. war. So yeah. we're talking t- less. We're talking ten years or less removed from that, and the economic impact of rebuilding and restru everything, mm-hmm. all of it, and then it does make you wonder. I hate I hate to do it, but I wonder then what kind of agreement right. was struck right. to hold these people in place. Right. I mean the. The cities were decimated. The cities were total, and that's where the most population lives. So they were the most homeless Affected, already. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So okay, so um, so we finally get and reported to this government agency, this West German government agency for political asylum. Now, if if you belong to the Communist Party, which was not, didn't mean you believed in it. Did right. not. It all depended what kind of job you had. Some jobs required that right. you belong to the party. Like like my grandfather on my father's side. My father's father was a Nazi, was, was in the belong, Nazi party, belong, but he was a civil engineer and he right. built sewers and lights. You know, he blew, built sewers and electricity and, and, and infrastructure. Right. Yet after the war, anyone who was part of the Nazi party, regardless was blacklisted for five years. Five years he could not work. Right. So as a civil engineer, he was not allowed to work, but he only signed up for the Nazi party because that's what he needed. So he had an employment. He needed to do that during the war and it really, it cost him. And further education and employment. Absolutely. Right. So, uh, so now you're, now you're here and at this embassy, your father is not a registered communist, correct? Because he was self-employed, he was a barber, and he's self-employed, so he didn't. There was never a need for him unless he wanted to, right. because he believed in this but that ideology, made it easier, which correct? he obviously did not. Otherwise, we wouldn't have left. Right, but that makes it easier for right. the transition, correct? That he never indoctrinated right. anyone, by signing up. Anyone who belonged to the party did not get political asylum, which meant they could stay in West Berlin. 
but not become but citizens. Could not travel into West Germany. Okay. So they could be free within the city of West within Berlin. This, but nobody want right. West Berlin was not. It wasn't it's what it in was. the middle of no. East Germany. Nobody wanted to be in West Berlin economically. You and had not hardly yet. any chance in there. Yeah. So a lot of these people went back home. A lot of them wow. did. A lot of them. So uh, and and imagine this. Ima imagine you're just trying to get everyone to shut up around you. So you just sign up. I mean, it's so simple, right? Just get off my back. Okay, fine. Right. I'll sign up. And you sign right. your name, your chicken scratch name. You don't even care, right? Next thing you know, you're going, you, you've never agreed with this, but you just went along to buy you time, your mm -hmm. time, whatever. You go to here and now you can't. I mean, this weird level of regret of some strange thing from something you didn't even know you would have. Like we talk about actions, repercussions. We right. talk about actions and consequences, right. and we talk I'm about talking serious repercussions right. could mean the difference. Your freedom, of your whole life, your yes. freedom of is right. literally your right. absolute human right. Freedom right. is at stake right. with a that single little, chicken scratch right. that you probably just was not. Right. We're not even interested in just to right. get people to shut up. I would imagine maybe they did. There some were a couple. I'm more sure thorough research. Where they found that, like if it oh, wasn't right. part of their job, if they weren't in the military right, right, and communist, right, right. or in the I don't know how far you know yeah. extensively that went. But still, I could but, see. Right, I would see that as the first line because once again, West Germany also doesn't cannot afford to absorb all these people, so Correct. they have to find some happy medium here. Right. Right. Plus, they didn't want communists infiltrating Absolutely. West Germany. Well, that's also the Red Scares have I mean, starting up. The, right. Right. I mean, 55, 53 in, in America. I mean, the Red Scare right. is right. rampant right. at this point. Right. So we we were accepted. We we were given permission to continue into West Germany. First, we spent six weeks in Berlin, East Berlin, in a refugee camp under horrible conditions just because of the sheer magnitude of, right. you know, like the, the kids in cages nowadays. Right. It's, the logistics it's, of it is almost impossible to manage. You can't understand right. how hard it is. Sleeping to, on yeah. the floor with a blanket right. around where all four people, that's your living area. And it is a shitty condition, but you're not complaining. It's just a shitty condition. I, I mean, think you're my nine. mother was complaining. Okay. Oh, she, was she? Okay. I think, I think. Did they, th did they expect it to be they better? They didn't have a bad, bad life back there. It right. was just the, the feeling of freedom, the, the right. whole. But that's what I mean. Is it, it was the expectation that it was going to be this shiny thing that everyone got to. Like it was going to be this utopia. And then it just no, turns out to be a bunch of dirty that, tents. Do you know what I mean? Like well, the expectation, kind of. I that you be treated better. I think. Not the first six weeks. When it turned into a year and a half of it, uh, yeah, I remember my mother crying many times, many times, missing her family. Uh, oh, the homesickness, Christmas. I can imagine, yeah. Uh, there was, it was, we came from a... We broke, your family's broken up. It was, fra right, it became right. fractured by by, ne right. by necess necessity Not, and for none your of freedoms. The, none of the relatives knew that they were going to do this. Right. And you couldn't they, tell anyone. Right. Because if right. you got wind, of, if Correct. anyone got wind, you were, you're in jail. You're and not. they were, they would, right. and they, they get would be punished if they knew because right. of the and fact of not that. reporting them. Right. Or not, you know, tattletale. Yeah, if it came up them. after. Right. Yeah, it's uh, so the they could not take the chance of any of them knowing. They call it uh, plausible deniability. Right. You know, it's like they. I never knew. He never told. How would I right. possibly? I have nothing to withhold because right. I wasn't told anything right. that I needed to. And, withhold. and if they thought that, it would jeopardize their job. It would. Yeah. Their livelihood. I mean, it had to be totally, totally secretive. So you're six and a half weeks in East Germany now. East Germany. Now, then what's the next? What's the, the next, next step? step is you get airlifted out of West Berlin into West Germany because you couldn't ground travel because you would, would be back in over. East. Right. right. They could. They could take potentially take you off. A oh, car absolutely. Or because right. you now know. Now you're a political I mean, prisoner. Six yeah. and a half weeks. They. They got wind of it back home already. You're on a list. Yeah, I mean they had a they had a network of, I think somewhere I read for every citizen for every five citizens they had a, an agent or a uh, a, a, a police. I remember there being a really weird it number. Was totally, totally. Out I of mean, whack. A, the spy network was yeah. 
unbelievable. Well, unbelievable. Uh, pl- plus it also was civilian based because you got credit in you got you got a lot of accolades for reporting in some Probably, yeah. or you get, you know, maybe you get an extra ration here or an extra, you know, right. accolade there right. or a, right. an award, whatever that would, right. that might be some kind of reward in some sense. So, so we got into West Germany and from there we were shipped from camp to camp. Okay, they had so them there's all a, throughout there's Germany. There's a camp in West Germany. There are, oh, multiple camps. All over the okay, place. Okay, so you, you went to another camp then. Right. Not, you haven't, you don't have a fixed structure yet. You're Four still in some weeks, kind of. Four or five weeks, then they ship you to another one. Okay. I don't know why it kept, maybe because job opportunities were cropping up there. They were, they were just. Trying to see what, they shuffling, were trying to thro- throw shit against the wall to see what would right, stick kind right, of almost they, uh, in a weird it's way. It's like. We went. I, we were in at least four or five different refugee camps during that time. Do you remember? The cities? Do you remember I mean, you're you're not old enough to even think to recall this stuff. So, do you remember? I where do you remember were? the conditions. But, no, and the stuff. cities. Like, do you remember the four places? Yeah, uh, one was in Karlsruhe. One was in a place called Weinsberg. One was in. Uh, I don't remember the third one. The fourth one was in a place called Pforzheim, where we uh, near Stuttgart, where we eventually state that was the last stop in west germany okay. that and was stuttgart's a major city within right, germany right well port time is too it's called the cold gold city okay and had a lot of jewelry and a lot of so so th- you also sign up for to be able to get an apartment or a place to live and that's how long it took two years to f- to get an apartment and you know, they built these new housing, uh, which were integrated refugees and the homogenous people. Uh, and a lot of those were displaced from the cities still. Right. Yeah, they're, remember, they're Germany ha- lost right. a lot right. of housing. Right. Just- after, after the war, every family, like, like my in-laws had lived in an apartment and they had to share it with three other families. That was, you had to do that. That was because they're, Otherwise, there would have been nothing but homeless people. So that was that was a mandatory thing. Until the housing was built to catch up to this need, that that's what was done. Right. So, um, so you're in full time. So we're in full time. Last one. Our last refugee stop, uh, and we got an apartment. But around this, like around this time. Um, my father was already saying, oh, I don't know if this is going to be our last stop or if we're going to go somewhere else yet. Well, we get this apartment and there was a, a hatred of the refugees. If something, if something was stolen, if something was, it was, it was blamed on the refugees. Well, it's no longer your tribe. I mean, it's, we're looking at this. It's, it's funny. We talk about humanity because mm-hmm. this is the one thing that that always crops up on this show is we have a people all together under Nazi regime, mm-hmm. unified, nationalist. We're true. Germans are very nationalistic. It's an odd thing, but they are. The German people are. So they're all together. And then the war is lost and they're broken up. And now they are now in their own individual tribes. And in less than 10 years or in 10 years, right. you already have people who fought on the same side towards mm-hmm. a unified goal, not the correct goal, but a unified goal right. together who fought arm in arm, hand in hand now are at odds right. within in 10 because years. Because we're getting housing. Because resources are the limited. the people that live there. Resources are right. limited. And right. who to whom do you give them? Right. This is where the humanity comes out. And right. that's like the evolutionary, in a weird way, greed you, or I hoarding. can't blame them. No, I can't not blame at all. But that's what's funny about the humanity. You could feel the hatred. You could feel it. But that's, could, what, but that's what speaks to the craziness of humanity. We are both together and completely apart. Right. Depending on the situ- the context of the time, situation, and everything, mm-hmm. we're human. We we are not we are not robots. This is the whole. This is the fluidity of of man and right. woman right. throughout time. So we had that. There was 
there were greens at this apartment, and there, but we weren't supposed to play on the grass. It's Germany, after all. You don't play on the grass. You don't play, period. No, yeah, right. kidding, kidding, kidding. Okay, so, so there was a whole bunch of us kids, and we were playing s soccer or kickball or, or even throwing the ball. And the manager of the apartment building singled me out. I was the only refugee among the kids playing. Singled me out and slapped me because I was on the grass. But they all were. They all they were. Singled but you, he, singled he singled me you out, out, took me and slapped me for playing on the grass. And I went back home and I told my dad. And my father said he is not going to let this go. He took the guy to court. Now, now let's talk about gutsy. this. Yeah, now let's talk Be about the American system first. Look. Very simple. America is a litigious society. You can sue anyone for anything without many repercussions financially or anything. Right. So there might be a cost, a little bit of court costs here and there, but you can pretty much get away almost for little cost to sue anyone in the United States. Correct. Germany has a German unique system. system. Tell us about this one. You sue if you win the lawsuit, fine. The person that loses the loss, if you're the litigant, if you're the instigator of the lawsuit, if you lose the lawsuit that you instigated, you pay the other person's legal fees. So there's a high Plus cost your here. own. Right. You are so you're not going to you're not going to sue willy nilly just right. because the McDonald's coffee was too hot right. or you have you it you have to be pretty sure of winning. Right. Before a, your you father, do this. Your father is a refugee. Felt, Hold on. Your father's a refugee. Limited money. Just got an apartment right, at this right, place. Right. But now, he felt so strongly about this. So strong in his convictions that right. he he will not take this. Right. This is a stand that he takes. Right. This is an, a pretty honorable, I mean, I would yeah. say a very honorable move in gutsy. this way. Gutsy. And just to even Sorry. leave East Germany was right. gutsy. All of it. Just, all of it. Just but in this the case courage now, it took. The, 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 the risk to losing this when there's already a bias against you mm -hmm. as a refugee. Right. Right. So there's, you know, Trusting you could have the legal right. system enough that they would be fair. Right. In what? Right. We're coming out of this experience. Right. right. So, so then it happened. So he so sues. So he won. He won the lawsuit. And he won. Right. Right. Now, do you remember when it was kind of a, but, was it assault? Was it a, what I don't was know. The, okay. I, uh, but I was whatever it was. Nine and a half years old. You were victorious. Ten years old. I don't. Whatever he fought, he won. It right. doesn't matter. That's, right. that's really the important right. piece here. Okay. So, but at this point, my dad made up his mind, I don't want to stay here. I don't want to live where I'm a second-class citizen. I don't want to live. Uh, Germans, it wasn't like Americans are. Americans are so welcoming. Maybe not now anymore, but certainly when we came. We, they were so welcoming of foreigners, and they were so supportive and so... Melting pot. It, was, yes, it really it totally was the was. idea that... Germany... Yeah. Uh, at least at that time, West Germany was not, and it's I would, because of the circumstance. Well, right. Let's be honest. Once right. again, they right. They're a down right now. You, let's even go back slightly further. We've got World War One, awful. Right. Out we of, lost that. Out of World War One right. comes crazy sanctions that are just yeah. insurmountable. Then the depression. Here it's I think a third, but there it's a half. Or here it's a quarter, oh, it's, there it's a third. It's ridiculous, yeah. the amount of unemployment. And then to get out of that, but by getting out of that, that put them into war because war creates right. production. Right. That's what Hitler did what he said, yep. but he also did what he said. Right. Right. Then we come out of this now. <laughs> Another bombed, destroyed, right. down. What are we doing? Then you're broken up. You're split into two. Mm -hmm. Now you're siblings mm -hmm. fighting over similar resource what do you do how do how does a how do a people feel at this point right everything's been done on their soil the, the war is there too right it's not like right. i mean america yeah. loses there's never right. been a single building except the civil war right really right. and the revolutionary um, war right. and war other of 1812 any other war we've been involved in war of 1812 when okay. they burned down washington right. dc but that's a <laughs> but still yeah regardless we lose world war ii there's no physical, I mean, there might be an economic impact, but not a physical right. harm to right. any of our cities. Right. Right. It's amazing. It really yeah. is amazing what yeah. Europe had to endure. Endure, correct. As a people. All of Europe. All yeah. of Europe. So, so uh, my dad said, I, I'm not going to stay here. But 
we really had limited options. Of course, America would have been our first choice, but you need a sponsor. And again, I don't know if that has changed. I don't think so. I just don't think it's as honored as what it used to be. Um, yeah, sponsorship was a very big step because you took on debt for you. You, you take on takes all, on the responsibility of those you sign all the for people, them. All of them that all you sign them. for, whatever. Right. In this case, it would be four people. Right. If you incur debt that you didn't pay, the sponsor is responsible for doing that. So it was a, it was a big, and who's going to do that right. but a relative? And and you didn't have relatives. We in had the United no States. one. We right. knew no, no one. one. We knew, knew no. My dad no one. didn't know a single person right. in the U.S. So he decided, okay, Australia. Well, it turns out that Australia Aust only wanted farmers. That you know, you know your grandfather he that would be the last thing he would want to do is farm yes he's, he's a beautician barber he's constantly washing his hands they're constantly in water he's not going to get his hands dirty like that a farmer would have to do that would not be something he could do successfully or so that so that was out so then we decided to apply to canada because once you're in canada you can come cross over immigrate to the u.s without a sponsor Once and we have had in, and we've had that we have relatives and family friends who have done that. not relatives but family friends who have right. done that they went who into went canada, canada and then came from came canada to the, US. to the u.s right so uh, of course you know you they check you health wise and and my sister had a herniated herniated navel which means she's had an audi she had an audi instead of an any it wasn't a volkswagen it was an audi <laughs> right and so they they refused us for health reasons we did not get accepted into canada okay so i guess that idea is out we're stuck here so my father did various jobs during those two years that we were in West Germany, but he finally, after we found, we found an apartment and he fi finally found employment in his craft. Okay. Which now was, where are, is this? This is important. Like okay. So it is important. So you, you stay, the, the last kind of camp you were, the is last the city about I would that you say stayed around. Nine months was probably in Fort Sun. Okay. Between the refugee camp there and then having the apartment. Okay. Uh, so my father found employment in center city. And he, he was, uh, he waited on, there was a customer that lived in the U.S. who was visiting relatives. And at the time, in Philadelphia, there was a German published news, weekly newspaper. And this man had this newspaper that he was reading. And when he left, he left it laying on a chair. And in between customers, you know, the barbers sit down and my dad picked it up and he's reading it. And there was an advertisement for a beauty shop. Now, not a help wanted ad, but just advertising yeah, the like, beauty shop. Like, hey, we, 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 right. we uh, style hair. So <laughs> my father decided to write, to write this man, the, the, the owner of this beauty shop, does not know this doesn't man. Doesn't know him. Doesn't know him from Adam. Has no idea. Writes a letter. Writes a letter to this man. <laughs> to the address of the of the barber shop, I'm right. assuming. Because it's on the right. It was a beauty shop. Right, he, a beauty shop. Because that, here it's separate. In right. Germany, it's one. It's, yeah, it's, it's one a trade. beauty. It's a trade. Right. As a whole. Right. It's an overall right. trade. Right. But I'm just saying, he sees the address. Obviously, the address would have been at, on the advertisement. Where, right. to, where to find right. it. Where and the, that's how he right. writes. He I, writes him a letter telling him uh, his story, telling him and there's a family with two children and and he'd love to come to the U.S., but he doesn't know a soul and explains this whole situation. And this man decided to sponsor us. Sight unseen. Sight unseen. Two kids, two adults. Right. Germans. Right. Now he was Germ of he German was descent. He was German, absolutely. So, he was born in Germany. So, he was from Germany. Okay. Yeah, he was. So, but uh, I'm saying, I mean, sure. Came that. over as 
a young child. Right, but didn't have a, didn't have a wife, right? Did never, not have, never married. Never married, never, never had married, children, right? Never, never had, had children. Anything. Right, right. So a very unique, very unique situation right. for a complete single individual right. well, to he take, lived literally with take his on a mother. family. So, so... Which a lot of family, I mean, this is 1940s, yeah, right. 50s, no, this 50s, is 50, 50s, but 50, but still, still yeah, very, 55, I mean... 55, 50. Yeah, a lot of ways 1955. Happening. So, um, he, uh, he said, yes, he would. So my dad applied for a visa to come to the U.S. We had to travel to Frankfurt as a family a couple of times uh, to be to be uh, to have a meeting with them to 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 be presented, you know, in front of the of the board. Uh, we had to have physicals and. Then wait. In Germany. Yeah. We had okay, to be interviewed. So you had American doctor, American physicians doing physicals to see if you're fit to be live in the United States or something like that. Is that right. correct? The, it was the embassy. Well, it okay, was, yeah, the it embassy. was the right. American embassy. It's all done through that. Right. But, but they right. have to check for all right. those All screens. kinds of physical ailments because they don't want somebody that Absolutely not. they're going to have to take care of them the rest of their life, you know. So um, we, then, then you had to wait. And- that took quite a while till we got notification. And in the meantime, we were kind of acclimating ourselves. We, we started to feel There's comfortable. There's growing pains, right? And, we started, and now that, yeah, it's we have a in. Not new apartment. We just, just bought brand new furniture uh, or furniture period that, you know, you got a sofa and you were so happy. And, right. uh, and then we got notification that we were accepted. I, my dad was all in. Yeah. My mother, oh, she didn't want to leave now. She, she, right. you she know, just now she's, got yeah, right, comfortable. Right. So far away. I mean, this was, you know, you didn't hop on a plane and you were back home. You took a boat. This, is, this was, you were never going to see your, at that time you leave. Yeah. You you're never going you to see your family see again. again. Right. Uh, so we, we were, we got permission to come over, uh, and we were sponsored by the Lutheran Church. There were many refugee boats like this, where the where the church sponsored their travel. They actually gave paid for the voyage, but you had to sign an IOU, an IOU to pay it back to them. There's a promissory note. Of promissory some sort. note, which I still have my oh, with do. my dad's signature. And take a picture of it so I can. Post I have it, it up. in the book. I have a. Okay. We have a family. We'll take that, a picture of it and right. just text it to me so I can add it to this to right. this episode. Okay. I'll just have it on there. So that'd be fun to to have. Right. So, uh, <clears throat> so we got permission, uh, and I don't. It it was like in the spring summer. And our journey was going to be in November, November 11th, I think it was, that we left. But we had to leave for, for Bremerhaven a few days before, and, and we stayed in a camp there till the, till the voyage. And we came over. We arrived in the U.S. November 22nd in New York. I remember the Red Cross meeting the Red Cross, I remember the donuts. They had gave out donuts to everybody. And the Red Cross facilitated getting us to Penn Station to travel to 30th Street. Penn Station is in New York City. In New York City. It's a train station. 30th Street is in Pennsylvania. In Philadelphia. I just want to say that because yeah, right. I, being from Philadelphia, I still, when I hear Penn Station. You think New York. I think Philadelphia because I think Penn. Yeah, I don't no, think 30th but it's Street, New York. but it's New York. <laughs> yeah, right. I don't, it's right. funny, even as a Pennsylvanian, just right. because Penn Station, right. it's just funny. Anyway. So, so we arrived uh, in Philadelphia. I remember getting off the train. This man did not own a car, so he sent a friend to pick us up. He never <laughs> owned a car. That sounds creepy. Yeah. But that sounds creepy in 2021. Back in 1955, 56, 55, that was probably very... November 22nd, 1955. That was surprisingly more... 
more normal. Like, right. yeah, he's got a friend. Okay, right. cool. Just hop in. We're, like trust. Right. <laughs> or just and I remember general. us being the last people standing on that platform. And we had no idea. Was this right. person ever going to show? What if you got was, ghosted back in 55? I, we had no idea. Oh, my gosh. Finally. That's and crazy. they kept announcing our name on the loudspeaker. But we didn't understand it as being our name because they did it with they the English it. pronunciation. And we had no right. idea that like that's... Like Zimmerman. Zimmerman. Yeah. And it, in German, you would say Zimmermann. Right. So it yeah, just, didn't it even sound alike. Yeah. So, yeah, you're, I mean, you're in a farm. And then a loudspeaker on top of it. You know, that's not very right. clear. Would so you like fries with finally that? this man came up to us and he said, are you, and he spoke German, are you the Zimmerman family? And he said, yes. So then he drove us and dropped us off at this man's house. And we stayed there for a couple weeks, I guess, for the first couple weeks. And then he got, he got us a place to live. It was an old man who was in his 90s. <clears throat> and he needed care. Uh, so as as a exchange, my mom taking care of the household and cooking for him, we we were able to live there. Uh, and then later, uh, after I had a few months of that, uh, my mom found a different type of employment. My dad found a job in a barber shop in in the Ogon section of Philadelphia. Uh, but we had no savings. We had no. We still owed money for the for the trip over here. Uh, and my mom needed to find a real job where she could earn money. And so they could get their own apartment. I mean, it was, we were a family with two kids with an old man. You, you know, yeah. you had to, you were very restricted. And so she found a job in, in a factory called Penn Fishing. They made fishing Penn reels. reels, right? Penn, Penn reels. reels yeah. And from there she learned about uh, this, This uh, it was actually a, 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 uh, a home uh, for orphans, but they also took in outsiders, um, a Catholic home. Like, I would say maybe 70 miles from Philadelphia. Okay. And near Allentown, Pennsylvania. Isn't it Cooper? Is it Cooper? Coopersburg. Isn't that where the baseball hall of fame? No, no that's, that's Cooper's New York. town, right? Coop, that, and that's town. in New York. Yeah, I always get those two right, mixed up. Right, But so, yes. <laughs> so we, uh, uh, she, she told us about this place, and she had her son there. Her son was there because they were in the same circumstances that we were in. And she, her son attended there. And uh, so we inquired, and yet they that they would accept us, and it was a live-in. You stayed there. You only came home on certain holidays, and most of the kids were orphans, most of them, but there were some others. And I remember, I think it was $9 a month for each of us to for room and board and health care. Health care. So it it was a pretty good deal. That is a pretty I mean, good deal. Daycare now is $9 every three minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Well, see, that was the other thing. That That's the only choice my mom had because she had no relatives to watch us. It, I could be on my own because I was already 11. You know, and back then, the, the what, did they, what do they call them? The latch key kids. That, that was no big deal. Uh, but my sister, she was only four. Right. Hard to watch her at 11. You can watch yourself at Well, 11. you're not allowed. First of right. all, I went to school. But you understand. I right. had to go to school. And at the first few months before we went to this home, I did go to a regular school uh, because my mother stayed home at this old man's house and, you know, this older gentleman's house 
and did his home, you know, his housework and everything. So she was able to watch my sister, but it didn't pay. She didn't have an income. So, uh, right. And to get off your feet, right. There, you need a you source get of started. Just, yeah, yeah. You need an influx of, right. of, of funds. Right. So, so, uh, and they were able to pay $18 a month and make more than $18, right. whatever. Right. right. And anything extra right. was really right. the great. Correct. So, uh, we, uh, I, I, I remember going to school. I, nobody knew a word of English. Nobody. I remember. Neither of the four of you, you mean. Right. I remember the kids would get up. I would get up. They would sit down. I would sit down. I, it was it was the strangest feeling. I mean, I didn't know a word of English. I had no idea. I remember. I remember. Back then, they had Girl Scout and Boy Scout days on Wednesdays, and all these kids came to school in their uniforms, their brownie uniforms and their Cub Scout uniforms. And I'm thinking, oh, is this like the Young Pioneers? What you know? Right. Like, that's. I, it's it, funny I even asked. That. I didn't even know that you were going to mention that. Yeah. It. It was like. I, I had no idea what was going on. It was it was like a dream almost. It was like a, yeah. It's funny. So. Once again, we talk humanity. You're mirroring, right? Trying to fit in, because you literally well, I, have no right. You have no you. You are completely in a foreign place, and your instinct, without even thought, is I'll just do what the person next to me is doing. That'll ev- work. That'll everywhere work. Everywhere we right? went. Everywhere we went. Uh, when we lived in the refugee camps, I would adopt the dialect of where we were. Just to fit I in. Would, I would, and I'm very good at it. To this day, when I watch a an English movie, yeah. or I'm watching like some some of these series, yeah, Downton Abbey, or right, I watch that. Absolutely fabulous. For a while, Monty I Python. the next day I find myself speaking internally with a British accent that that's how in tuned I am to yeah. dialects and or just change right, yeah, that malleable. Right, right. But that makes sense though, because that's a, gr- that's one of the first ways language is one of the first ways to, to connect to your tribe. I mean, once you're going place to place, right. you don't have a home yet. Every place you have to, you, right. And you have to I can in. imagine. By I the went f- to thirty-two different schools in my life. And I, I can imagine one time. the thirty-second one. How good, how quickly you knew right. how to navigate the mm-hmm. pitfalls of awkwardness and whatever to fit in quicker. Right. Like you probably evolved, and each time it came almost like a skill right. skill set. It's right. very interesting. Right. So I've moved now, so many times, so many different times that when I finally, when I got married, I have lived in the house that we bought after three years of marriage for 53 years. I've not moved yet. <laughs> so, so that's your 32nd. Right. That's a pretty good 32nd time. Um, so now you're in Coopersburg in the orphanage. Right. Your mom and dad are working right. hard. And once to... a month they were allowed to visit. Okay. And my sister, she would, she would cry. She didn't understand what was going on. Why were they leaving? Why she's four years old? She, you didn't understand either, but you were more. Adult I understood about. Oh, did I, you? Did I, you? Okay, I, I didn't understood. Know. I was by this time I'm twelve. Had, right, but yeah, you, you knew you had to do what you had to do. Right. I think, my mom explained meant. it. She ex- if it, she would have sent my sister on her own and kept me, but she she needed my sister to have that right support. That yeah, she other needed, support right. because. Absolutely. I, I could fend for myself. I could go home, you know, right. by myself. Right, absolutely. Get all that. But my sister wasn't in school yet. Right. So, but they had, there were German-speaking nuns there. Mm-hmm. And they helped tremendously with the language, with the, with the you know, with the whole language problem. Right. Now, the thing was, my sister and I, we were separated because they had a smaller uh, dormitory for the small kids. And then... A certain one, age group it, right, it range. right. Yeah. but my mom implored them to please let my sister go over to the because she didn't know the language she 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 was totally bewildered and well, they, it would help them i mean that you're helping her I well mean, they said long, she could longer. come over as long as she could keep, keep up, up yeah, with that. with 
you know, with everything that had. So it did put a little bit of stress on me because you had to have your bed made by six o'clock. You had to have your teeth brushed. You had to have your hair combed. You had to be dressed. You had to, by six o'clock, you, you had to be ready, kneeling with your hands folded, ready for prayers. And, and my sister did not want to get, she still, well, she, she does get up early now, but come on, come on. She's a farmer, for goodness sake. <laughs> yeah, she, yeah, right, uh, she gets up early. Right. I would hope she gets up early. Right, but anyway. Or never so, goes to sleep. I'm not sure which one that is. So so once she hit six years, she was six years old and ready to go to school, then we were taken out of there, and we moved back home. And by this time, my parents had an apartment, uh, a nice little apartment, and... But they were financially able to um, t- to make the family whole again. I mean, right. there's I can't even imagine what I I, I can't imagine what nothing is. I re- I just can't. I'm I've been blessed. I've been yeah. fortunate. I do not know what not or even de- like less than nothing. I mean, yeah, you and, know, right, right. It's, I I can't imagine that level. In I can't imagine any way. I it would be overwhelming for me for sure. And I just, the, the fortitude is just crazy. Yeah, yeah. So you're back there. Um, everything else happens. But, I mean, just how, the story of how you got here is just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that man signing for us. Yeah, I mean, a sponsorship was needed and a complete stra- stranger. Complete stranger. Right. Who later sponsored my dad's brother and his family <laughs> two years later okay that's how they came over and that's obviously but they came over not through berlin they didn't have to go through that through that they they came over because my aunt had family in west germany their grandfather her grandfather uh lived in west germany um well they were really displaced from from uh, what now is Poland, but they were just, right. dis- which before the war was part of Germany. Well, but after the Ger- war was... R- Germany's first act of war was invading Poland. Right. In 35, 36? 39. 39? 39, 39, 39, yeah, 39. Yeah. yeah, so... But, yes, it's still all... I mean, that whole area, even, bless you, even though the <coughs> even the Czech, the Czech area, you know, the Czech and all the other areas are all... <coughs> It's all Germanic. I mean, Austria. It's you know, it goes back to the Ottoman kind of so, area. Yeah. And very, very. It's just an amazing story of how. I mean, I could go into so many details, but. Well, but, you have a couple of stories you want to share. Like I, the one I remember, um, something about you. You were given something to eat. Oh, when we when we crossed over the border in Berlin. To West Berlin to or West East Berlin? Okay. From to East West Berlin. Berlin. You cross over Berlin. through the French section. Right. We got through. There's a vendor on the other side, on the west side. There's a vendor. And and he said, oh, would the little girl like a banana? Now, of course, he's a vendor, so he's not going to give me for free. the banana for free. Right. He's not going to give me the banana that's the best banana. It, he's going to give me the banana the that, least. that he probably can't sell anymore. Yeah, right. So I never saw a banana in my life. And those would probably have brown spots on them. They Be soft did. a little. Okay. Uh-huh. My mom, oh, yeah, so what my happened? mom what happened was though? like in heaven. She right. hadn't seen a banana since before the war. And, oh, and she, I remember her peeling it and sticking it in my mouth and me getting it in my mouth and spitting it out. And my mother was so embarrassed. She slapped me in the face left and right. Yeah, like, that was shameful. Yeah. yeah, it was like to her yeah. that was, but it was, oh. Right, was, you, didn't, you didn't experience it. First you didn't of all, know all the texture was foreign to me. Right. And then I never, a banana has a distinct taste. Yeah. I mean. And you never had one. I never had and one it before was in my life. And it was rotten. And so, it was, well, or, it was, or I don't want to go as brown, far as rotten, brown. but certainly. But sort of brown, soft. Brown, or maybe then I might eat it nowadays when I have the choice, you know. Yeah, but still. Yeah. But I mean, 
once again, it was not the optimal banana. <laughs> yeah, not knowing, right. especially coming right. from not knowing. Right. But my mom was so embarrassed right, here absolutely. in front of this guy who's so generous Both to give view, a banana. Oh, right. Both sides yeah. of that were, were fine. Right. Uh, you didn't right. know any better. It's not like it was malicious. Right. Right. But her, her embarrassment and shame was real. Because yeah. right. uh, right. it was a gift. It was just a reaction. Right, it was a but gift. I mean, right. Yeah. I, you know, it's just one of those things. Yeah. And that's that's really the only time I ever remember getting smacked from my mom. That with physical. Yeah. You know, and it was such a like a reaction, like knee jerk reaction. So absolutely. So any other stories that came across come across your mind? And and what's interesting? So basically, your father's brother was also sponsored by the same person, correct? correct. You said okay. Uh -huh. Now this is what's interesting because once again, your father did not tell his brother. He no. couldn't tell no. his brother. No. So no. So he only followed by example. Right. He right. no. He didn't know how. You did it because obviously right. didn't know you, that you did it, right? Right, unless they spoke. Well, at that After, point, could then, they communicate then? Okay, at that to each time, other? sure, you could. Like you could phone send call letters, or some, oh, letters and all, okay. not phone. I mean, okay. the, but the phone, yeah, because we knew nobody had a phone. Right, that's true. Okay. In our family, anyway. Okay. I mean, so letters there might have been one or two people in the whole town that had owned a phone or had a phone. So, but so did your father not, give nobody you, from our? Did your father give you the pointer, or give your brother, his brother, the pointers? I don't kind know. of like, and hey, I, this is what we did and how we did it. I know this because they were going to. an entirely different route, right. and you would not put that down on paper. That's what I mean. That's because, what I'm asking. Right? Because how would they your mail that? could could be watched. That's what I mean. That's right. why I'm asking. Yeah. Now we're we're in the U.S. maybe year and a half. My father gets called down to the FBI. This is in the middle of the Cold War. Gets called down to the FBI. He, my father was a, an avid, he, he was on a soccer team at the time when we left East Germany. He, he was very uh, involved in, in sports, in, yeah. in yeah, community uh, events. In, and, in and all in the, the yeah. so my, my uncle would send, once a month, send my father a, with all the local soccer news and and it would be you know it would be a manila envelope a little thicker than you know letter certainly but communication my father was getting them on a monthly basis and i would say after maybe a year or so uh he gets called down to the fbi and they have one of these laying in front of them okay and he had to open the envelope in front of them right. for them to check sealed, the content. Sealed envelope, to see right? To if there was right. any espionage, right. any kind of, I mean, it was that, that right, intense scary. back then. Right. Yeah. They knew where you were. They, I mean, the network, you know, was, right. but like, it was like, much greater on like the, the, the other side. Like the scores on the paper or some kind of code for something. Some, or, yeah. They, he had to totally disassemble the, Wow. contents of this only one time is that the only time they ever told him <clears throat> that's the only time he but then later on after no the wall was still up 89s when the wall went down right correct? okay and this is actu 19, actually in 89 this is in 89 okay, it was in november when the wall went down so right in august we had we had east german company our relatives 11 of them visit us 11 came over to visit and stay with my aunt and uncle and my mom and dad and uh at the time at the time they i mean there was no idea on the horizon that the wall was going to be down three months later it was it was totally it unexpected was business as usual until it like literally next day was like what the hell just happened right like i mean right. i remember when the it was a, right. a literal it was a collapse. It was a shock. It was a literal right. collapse. It right. was not a slow right. ember fizzling out of the con right. of the Eastern Bloc. It, it was a pretty abrupt. Now the abrupt. East Germans could travel. They came to the, but never a husband and wife together unless they were on pension. Right, because you just pull it. They didn't right. care right. whether they lost those. But if you were a productive working member, you could only the wife only go or the husband mm. only go. 
Uh, if you had children, or maybe only one or two of them, if you had three of them, not all of them could go. Right. Never the whole, whole family right. could visit as right. a whole. So we we and we had them come over, different family members at different times. But this one time, eleven of them came at one time, three months before the wall came down, and the FBI visited us. So they knew they were here. I was there, and I don't remember that. Yeah. I don't remember that. They, well, you were born. The visit. 80, 1989, Oh, you said? yeah. Okay, right. Well, they didn't visit <laughs> us. They visited oh. my parents. Oh, okay. Got it. They they visited my parents. Right. Okay. So, so. But uh, I mean, we have, we live around the corner from that. I mean, yeah, really, I know. But they saying, came. Right. I was just saying, I don't remember that And they wanted to know, what are they doing here? What? So they, they started high school in 1989. Just inquisitive. They were just checking up to make sure that there was not exchange of information right. or you know anything my sister wanted to work for the fbi she she did not get accepted because of our connection to east germany uh it makes sense yeah i mean look I yeah, understand. they it's bought that it was a you know it was a, a real threat they you know it was a real threat yeah yeah i mean it, so it was, it was beyond perceived for sure right right so that's everything. That's well, just about. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit, just a little story. Yeah. Well, it's just a remarkable thing. I mean, like I said, I, I'm so blessed that I, I was born here, and it's, I, I had no choice. Just like, pretty much no one who's right. born wherever they're born, you're right. born where you're born, right? Right. Um, but just the story of perseverance, and then, I, I mean, I hate to say it, but like, it's like the doing it the right way, right? Following the protocol, right? Like, and I, many people went through that. We are, ours is only one story. Right. And it it has to be that way. I mean, otherwise you're going to overload the system and and it's going to be chaos. It's just, you know, it's just going to be chaos. Well, that's uh, just been an amazing story. Yeah. So is there any final thoughts, uh, anything just, that you wanted to I share? I would just want to say that Freedom is the best gift you can have, and I hope we never lose it. I hope. I hope this country wakes up and and knows how blessed they are, and and fights for it, and appreciates it. Because unless you've lived under different conditions, you you don't know what freedom. You we really don't even know how lucky we are. I don't think you understand the depth of freedom until it's taken. Right, right. And once it's taken, it's getting yeah. it back is much more challenging than keeping it. Right. Than holding on to it. In this current environment, people are being shut down for ideas and thoughts, and that should not ever happen. It's scary to the, me. It's the, frightening. The answer to, uh, to a bad idea is a good one, not to turn it off. Because, I, you know, the more bad ideas, the more you're exposed for just being dumb. It's okay. That's a good thing. I want you to be exposed. It doesn't mean more people are going to be indoctrinated just because you're being allowed to say it. Everyone should be free. That that speech is so important. And it is it is lost. It, not lost. It's being, it's being challenged Slowly now. Slowly eroded. It's being challenged for sure. Let's start there. I don't want to be nihilistic about it, but it's challenging. And we're seeing this with multiple things. But... You know, we're we're seeing a change in a very different direction than you're used to. It's not certainly not the America that you came to or no. that your father no. believed in or whatever. But that's natural for a country to change and evolve. But the way it's happening, that but mirror, starting to mirror similar things that you saw, right? That right. you experienced that you would never want right. to ever go back Being to because you experienced to speak it for repercussions because yeah. of fear of a repercussion, or you know. Yeah. So it, it, it's, it's just a remarkable thing. So thank you so much for sharing that. I'm glad we got this all to all on here because it's fun. So yep. is there anything else you want to share for anyone? Cause we'll share this with our family, obviously with everyone else uh, out there in the podcast world, but thanks well, for doing this, Mark. Absolutely. Well, this once again, a couple of reasons I wanted to have my mother on and I'm so blessed. Thank you for, for doing this, mom. I love you. It, it was great. I'm love so glad too. you could make this trip because we, this was kind of one of the core 
thoughts for me to do this. And we, w- we weren't sure how we were going to do it, but it came out. I feel like it turned out very nicely. So thank you. Good. Thanks. Um, but it's one of those things where I know from where you came and I know what we grew up with and I know what's changed and everything. I have a different perspective, certainly than you, but I'm not to the level at the current environment. But what's interesting is I feel like there's this bridged gap where I, I try to communicate concepts to the generation that doesn't understand the, from the physical to the digital, for example, on, in money is a good way to, to talk, or just the general concepts that are changing so rapidly in today's world. But I'm also hoping to bridge the older understanding to the newer people but it's it's daunting because we're just being pu- we're being pulled to extremes. The world is moving so fast. Yeah, and yeah. I, and and all I say is change is happening through the middle, not to the middle. Right. It never happens to the middle. We just go okay. Let's just use orange hair guy didn't work. Let's go complete one eighty on all fronts. That's all it is. I'm not. Mm-hmm. I'm that's all we have to say in that direction it's just how humanity is we don't say orange hair didn't work is there something between orange hair and the other complete opposite of the orange hair because that i'm gonna tell you probably not gonna work because it's another (coughs) the outsides don't work we work so well in the middle all all of so many of our general concepts interpersonally many of us agree with many mild middle of the road type things but we have to choose a side for some reason and the free the lack of freedom to express where we are and the strong country has to have a strong middle class and that's what's being eroded yeah the the middle class totally and a completely additional issue that i can't even no we can't go there but we don't have enough time in the world but we just really i mean just talking just speech freedom right the individual right the human right of the individual i i know this and this is what this is what i always see from your story is it started with x to shut down because it was bad and yes hate speech if it's hateful or whatever i would say is not good speech but it starts there but then the line keeps moving and before you know it, something you said is now not acceptable. Right. Only because that's the way not, it transitions. Yeah. Now, hate speech is not is not a good thing. However, the op- opposing piece to that would be good speech and speech about love and encouragement and exposing hate and and admonishing it. It would be to speak against it, not to turn it off. Not to shut it down. Right. It would just to speak against it, you know, which is the right thing to do. Um speaking up you know the lack of ability to share concepts is is dangerous on on all sides this is not one side or another right. this is all sides but um just knowing what you came from and what you experience and you see some similarities to the current change with and it starts with speech right and it starts with kind of the the shushing the shushing like the let this this oh, can't be talked right we or, can't yeah. talk about that um, and that that's generally where it begins. And right. that's what we're scared about. So mm-hmm. any final thoughts? I, I'm just so blessed. I'm, I nice love to, you, Mom. Nice Thanks. to talk with you. Yes, it was so much fun. It was, it's was. it been a great trip so far, and we're going to have some more fun. Right. But um, once again, everybody, this has been another episode of Knocked Conscious. Uh, please follow, subscribe, rate, review. Once again, this is a, it's just a remarkable story. I'm so blessed to have my mom here to share this story because it, it's such a unique thing. I, uh, I know my brother has an older recording with my grandfather. Uh, maybe we can transpose that onto some kind of audio, and I'll release that in a future time just uh, as an accompaniment to this. But uh, thank you again, Rita. Welcome. Welcome. Say goodbye, everybody. Wave to the camera. Bye, everybody. (laughs) (laughs) All right, Mom. We'll love you very much. Thank you so much, everyone. You're welcome so much. Have yourself a great day. Once again, knockedconscious.com. Take care, everybody. (laughs) 